So in this scenario, we're throwing a ball up into the air. We're interested in um, maybe the starting point when it was just released. So a little diagram can sometimes help. There's our hand there and we're throwing the ball and it heads up here and it's at its very top point. And of course, it'll come back down. But we're interested in at the beginning and at that very highest point. So what we could say is we could say, well, here's our before and here's our after. And in our before, we could stop and say, energy, what do we have going on here? Well, we, we would consider that this is maybe this starting point or where h equals zero, the height. And so we would say at the beginning, we don't have any potential energy, that h would be zero there. But it's just being released with a velocity, 6 meters per second in this case, so it definitely has kinetic energy. Now, as it travels up to the very top, or after at the top here, let's see what we have here. So in this case, we definitely have potential energy. It's high up there. The H is not zero in this case. The kinetic energy, on the other hand, well, at the very top, We've gotten down, the velocity starts at 6 and it gets less and less and less and less and less until it reaches the very top, at which point, at this very instant, the velocity is zero. And then, of course, it starts becoming a negative velocity as it heads back towards the ground. So, in this case, the kinetic energy is zero. So, we kind of visualize this from an equation point of view. We can just say energy before equals energy after. And as we discussed, uh, in the before situation, we have kinetic energy and no potential energy. And in the after, we have potential energy and no kinetic. Or another way of thinking of it is we start off with lots of kinetic energy, and all that kinetic energy as it travels up is all being converted into potential energy until it reaches the very top in which all of the kinetic energy has become potential energy. So let's see what we can do here. Kinetic energy, we know 1 half mv squared. And potential energy, mgh. And one thing we can notice is that we have an m in on both sides of, these equation, on, of this equation. We can cancel that out. So bottom line is, uh, what does that tell us? It tells us that the mass of this ball, uh, it could be, um, you know, a baseball, it could be a basketball, it could be a bowling ball. Um, the mass wouldn't have any impact if it was leaving. I mean, it would have a lot of impact on how to get it up to that velocity, a lot more force required. But if we can get it to that velocity, from then on, the energy in the projectile here, um, the mass wouldn't have any impact. So we can uh, rearrange this for the h, and so we see over here we can divide by g, we can divide by g, and so we would end up having h is equal to, and those g's cancel out, 1 half v squared over g. And some people might move that 2 to the bottom, which is fine. Um, but we can just plug in some numbers there. The 6 for the velocity, the 9.8 for the g, and throw that into our calculator to get 1.8 meters. And there's our final answer. So throwing it up, start at 6 meters per second, we know that it will get to a height of 1.8 meters. And in reality, it would be just a tiny bit less than that. I mean, depending on what type of ball you were looking at, um, due to the wind resistance. But, um, you know, for a typical baseball or something like that, or, or a soccer ball or volleyball or whatever, uh, it would be just barely less than that. So that's a good way of making a solid prediction. H would be 1.8 meters.